Ardipithecus possessed a brain size smaller than that of Australopithecines and within the range of chimps. The brain size of Australopithecines are slightly larger than chimps at 400 to 550 cc's, while that of Ardipithecus was 300 to 350 cc's. While the face was small, its muzzle did project as in the earlier Sahelanthropus. Ardipithecus ramidus is currently known from the remains of about 36 individuals, and it is known from Ethiopia about 4.4 million years ago. It probably would have weighed about 50 kilograms and was likely the ancestor of the Australopithecines. An earlier species, Ardipithecus cataba, is known from fragments 5.5 to 5.7 million years in age. More than 140 teeth are known from Ardipithecus ramidus. Small canines of Ardipithecus indicate that the reduction uh, of intermale aggression and a decrease in sexual dimorphism had probably occurred by this point. The thickness of tooth enamel was intermediate between that of chimps and later hominids, suggesting a generalized omnivorous diet. Ardipithecus was a facultative biped, although its walking was more primitive than that of the old Australopithecines. The upper pelvis, the ilium, was almost identical to that of modern humans, as in Australopithecus, and would have allowed bipedal locomotion. The lower pelvis, particularly the ischium, was almost identical to that of apes, and unlike that of Australopithecines, indicating that it often relied on climbing. Australopithecines further modified the lower pelvis and thus reduced their climbing ability. Ardipithecus had not reduced the number of lumbar vertebrae to three to four, as in modern apes. The hands of Ardipithecus, that is, the length of the lengthened digits, the absence of stiffening of the joints, and a mobile joint between the carpals, suggest that it used its palms rather than its knuckles when it was walking on all fours, and that its hands were not specialized to support its weight while climbing. The foot of Ardipithecus resembles that of an unspecialized monkey rather than those of modern apes. Its large, opposable great toe would have been inefficient in walking. Apparently, many of the foot specializations of modern African apes, such as the lengthening of the foot, the loss of the os perineum, and the repositioning of the fibularis tendon occurred after the human lineage had split from, from that of the apes.